should you pull on these banners? If you're feeling the Christmas spirit, or if you're just eager to have a certain someone come down your chimney tonight, then surf right into it. But if getting inside Santa's sack isn't good enough for you, then if you're watching this, you're probably wondering, are any of these units and ARs any good? If so, you've come to the right place. I'm Arithan, and I'm here to tell you if these units and ARs are for you. Like last time, we'll be evaluating units based on their ability to handle four types of relevant quests. Reliability, speed, and damage are valued above all else for free quests and daily quests. These are also important in dungeon quests and challenge quests, but other traits like endurance, mitigation, and flexibility also gain value. As for ARs, determining their worth requires a significantly different approach because of how the state of the game stands now. Like with units, optimization is the name of the game when it comes to value judgments. Although optimizing for speed and reliability are high priority, no other factor is quite as important as resource optimization. Unlike with units, we are at a stage where all six team AR slots can be filled with resource boosters. What this ultimately means is it will always be suboptimal to bring non-boosters. Except in the case of challenge quests. In other words, boosters are king. This is the case even if the booster in question doesn't even have accompanying battle effects, which is in fact the case for some of them. This leaves the majority of ARs, in other words, the non-boosters, in relevancy hell. It certainly does not help that the majority of these ARs, even rare ones, often have mediocre effects. When used effectively, a good utility AR can push your team past the nearby threshold to make certain strategies viable. But, as units have become remarkably stronger as of the past couple of years, these threshold passing effects have become less relevant even in challenge quests. Nonetheless, they may be useful for people who don't have these cutting edge units, and may even be useful in other quests for those who don't currently own all the boosters. With this state of affairs in mind, let's check out the contents of these banners. Starting off with the Sunshine Christmas Transient Summon. Yasuyori struggles to justify his existence as a 5-star unit with a mid-damage first turn magic charge and little else afterward. He has some decent personal defense with no healing, prolonging his stay on board only to bestow to allies some truly mediocre effects. In all honesty, the only reason to keep him on board is so that he can steadily build his unimpressive charge again. With little reliable personal damage and even less reliable damage amp, he should never be used for farming in free or daily quests. He underperforms in tanking well enough to rebuild his charge up too, making him only suited for quests with moderate damage. It is a complete mystery as to what this unit is exactly designed for, placing him as a definitively underwhelming unit. Z's provides a selection of supportive effects, from healing to damage amp to damage disablement. These supportive effects, however, are somewhat inconvenient to get off due to the timings, effect ranges, and rates. She finds better use as a unit that can better positionally advantage your team through her board wide pull and her extended movement. Due to this combination, she would be effective in certain large and wide maps found in any type of quest, depending on the enemy positioning. Her weak supportive effects may have you second guessing if you should bring her though, with her positional dominance only being conditionally useful. Z's is a unit you can afford to miss. Itzamna still holds a unique and inimitable role after originally releasing nearly three whole years ago. He's able to spread all of his buffs to allies after moving, with the drawback of removing all his own buffs after. Now, I say drawback lightly here, as it turns out this feature actually becomes an incredibly strong asset when paired with another buff spreader. With such a partner, he can pass a massive amount of buffs back and forth, refreshing their duration indefinitely. He's also a source of a large selection of buffs, providing damage mitigation, debuff mitigation, skill activation rate amp, and damage amp. As the sole centerpiece to such a powerful strategy, Itzamna, with the right setup, is nearly essential to have. Choji can provide his allies some impressively fat damage amp at the price of some peculiar conditionals. He asks for specific positioning and blessing on the board in order to unlock his peak potential. His meaty damage amp without any need to move lets him excel in both dungeons and challenges, but his demanding amp prerequisites and his lack of own personal damage 
make him fall behind performing in free and daily quests. He does get his moderate hitting charge up fairly quickly, but not being able to maintain that level of damage every turn erases any potential for him to become a full-fledged comp player, leaving him as someone only okay to have. Dead has a strong grip on large and wide maps, board wiping with mob clearing damage on the first turn while being able to ferry allies into a readier position for subsequent turns. This, paired with his humble supportive effects, make him potentially suited to taking on some dailies, dungeons, and challenges. Unfortunately, he is held back by the inconsistency of his supportive effects, lack of strong utility between his charges, and inability to counter any mechanic. Dead builds his board wide charge up fairly quickly, but you will still need to stall for a few turns, which you can achieve by having him ferry his allies to handle those off-charge turns. His respectable charge damage and moderate charge uptime makes him overall nice to have. Taking a short break from units, it's time for a lightning round for the new Sunshine Christmas ARs. Turning back to units, let's check out the other reprinting trends in Summon for Battle of the Bells. Claude was formerly considered a strong single target damage amplifier on his initial release. However, his relative utility has since only fallen behind, particularly because the timing and positioning of his two damage amps remained at odds with one another. These incompatible damage amp stacks are not compatible for free quests and only find limited use in coin scuffles. Besides his amp, he provides various types of support, including healing, charge building, and positional stability. He still has some uses when it comes to long-term damage and buff warding, and so has some potential life in dungeons and challenges. You don't have to feel too bad about not snagging him, as you won't miss much. Melazine does nothing remarkable or unique at a low rate at her occasional best, and acts as complete dead weight at her usual worst. Her only damage amp source is unreliable and has a questionably useful area of effect, making her completely unusable for farming. Her other abilities to disrupt the enemy are embarrassingly weak and unpredictable. Her only useful ability to build ally charge is found on many other units, including Melazine's very own 3-star. You may likely find more use from the mobs in 3-stars of the game, Consider this a warning, as no one deserves to have the misfortune of pulling this unit. My condolences to those that did. Pollux is a risky supportive unit, relying on increasing the low rates of his effects with multiple rolls and rate modifiers, which includes strong effects to resist death and moderate effects to mitigate damage and debuffs. His lack of damage amp, low range, and focus on survival and mitigation makes him useless for farming in free quests and dailies. His strength in resisting death isn't particularly remarkable either, only being able to cheese dungeons and challenges with a large amount of luck, relying on such luck to be at his best in only a few kinds of quests. Hulk is someone you can safely miss out on. Khan Griesnir is one of the saddest 5 stars in the game at the moment, functioning as a tank that inconsistently tanks. A repositioner that can't always reposition, and a damage amplifier that can't activate his own amp. His lack of a single reliable self-sufficient role makes him essentially unusable for both free quests and dailies, and his move penalty dramatically reduces his own defensive utility for dungeons and challenges, draining all his health in 10 turns. His only saving grace is his ability to build up his team's shard for those first 10 turns, but there are plenty of other units, including 3 stars, that can surpass this utility with a lot more safety and reliability. Turn back now and look away, because Tong Griesner is not a unit you'll ever use. So, should you pull on any of these banners? You can safely skip the Battle of the Bells transient summon in its entirety. As with any event with new ARs however, you may want to use some tickets on a Sunshine AR summon just for the drop boost. But keep in mind it's unlikely you'll find use of these ARs after this reprint has passed. As for the Sunshine Transient Summon, although Dead and Joji may fulfill some staple roles, they are certainly not exceptional in those roles. 
Not by a large margin. Itsamna may open up a lot of potent strategies if you have the right units, but do keep in mind Itsamna is permanent and redeemable from the anniversary exchange every December. I hope these recommendations helped you on your gacha journey. If you found this helpful, please consider leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing. I have a Patreon and am also accepting tips. You can find a link to these in the description. Take care everyone.